My wife's really funny in the morning. Or, actually, any time we have a computer issue. She uh, goes out of her way to help me because she panics because of any issue that comes up with the computer because I spend so much time repairing computers. Our own, usually. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is that she's the one who kind of loses it, and I'm the one that just goes, well, okay. And I start working my way through what we call the process of elimination. You know, you have to deal with, in technology, trying to figure out what day we're at. <laughs> in technology, I was like, that's nah, not right. Are we June? No, we're July. In technology, often what you run into is this whole idea is that you have to go step by step, which works perfect for Christianity because in a lot of ways, you know, that's what we do as Christians. We have to work through our issues step by step. We have to walk with God step by step. We have to take each step one step at a time. And if you're a good network engineer, you backtrack each individual step that maybe a user did, or you did, or somehow a programmer did, or something. But you have to go line upon line of code, so to speak, precept upon precept of programs and additions as well as uh, you know any changes to the basic operating system. And you just kind of work your way through, basically. You go through this minor, usually you should start with the minors and work your toward, way towards the majors, but like most people, you start with the majors and work your way to minors. So, it was humorous today because yesterday we set a record as far as <coughs> the number of people viewing, like, the blogs. The blogs have gone crazy, you know, they're up, up around hundreds and thousands, you know, and like, wow, man, it's just totally crazy. And the forums have gone way over the top, so it's been amazing to me, but I woke up this morning thinking, all right, cool, you know, praise the Lord, you know, yesterday was neat because we got so, so much material out and people were like really, you know, digging it and loving it, obviously, because they're sharing it and, you know, passing it around, more people are getting it and it's like, cool, praise the Lord, you know, they're discovering Jesus and growing and flowing and knowing and experiencing God in a personal and intimate way that maybe they never thought of before. And I was laughing because, you know, I, I was like, well, you know, I think I'll make the computer better, so I ran kind of like a major virus check all night long and had all these things going, you know, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, blah, blah, blah. Get up in the morning and boom, I can't get the keyboard working. It's like, well, all right, so we got some conflict. And so I start working through it and then I tell my wife and she's like, oh no, I know how you get when you win. Well, I don't get any certain way. I get focused, you know. I have to think linear, line upon line, you know, I have to work my way downward or backward through all these processes. And when you have a bigger system, like I do, you have a lot of processes, so you have to work each one, you know, down one by one, you know, da, da, da. And you have to try to remember, like, because if you haven't had any problems in a while, you have to go, oh, you know, okay. And you run your programs, you know, to try to find it, to fix it, and if they don't find them, then you have to kind of, like, manually do things. And it gets to be pretty crazy after a while, because when you're someone like me, you can always figure out a workaround, and you're always trying to work around while you're trying to solve the problem. So I had a lot of things going on, you know, to sign phone line. I'm more like... Eh, you know, well, just praise the Lord, let's do it, you know. So I worked my way through it, you know, and my wife was like, oh, no, you know, and she's thinking, I'm going to be on that computer forever. So she takes off her work, and sure enough, I solved the problem. As soon as she was out the door, you know, I had dragged the vacuum cleaner. You know, we got a pretty, pretty nice little vacuum cleaner, you know, it's kind of tall one from Walmart, you know, but it's got massive suction, you know, and so if you put on that little attachment that's, you know, like for edges and corners, works great on computers, so that's what I do. So I use the massive suction and do the keyboard and bingo, solve the problem. Just like a nerdy would. <laughs> and that's the thing about how God does that in our life. A lot of times he needs to actually get better suction and get us off of what we think is the problem when we're pointing fingers at everyone else and really get into our heart you know, and begin to take out the dirt that we put in there. You know, he's got to clean up the connections because if there's dirt in there for your input, you know, like if you're putting dirt in your eye, you know, or you're listening to some garbage, you know, music, like secular music, you know, you may think secular music's good for you, but guess what? It's going to gum up 
your input device sooner or later. It's going to affect your soul sooner or later. It's going to get your emotions all wound up sooner or later. So you really need to kind of like get rid of the secular music. Now you may not do that right away. You may be, oh, but I love my secular music. It makes me feel so in love. No, it doesn't. It makes you feel so selfish because that's what most love is, whether it be Eros, Phileo, Sturgio, you know, and all the other Greek words for love that we use, you know, in America, but it's really not love because God is love. And when you have that kind of love, believe me, it's so much better than what you were playing with when you were in your soulful state, you know. And when you're kind of like a soulful Christian, you know, and you're just like full of emotion and you're like, you know, and you're kind of, and you go, you know, you know. You're one of those kind of like, you know, roller coaster riders, you know, you're just kind of like, ooh, you're on those highs, ooh, then you're on your little lows, ooh, then you're on those highs, ooh, then you're on your little lows. just isn't worth it. So, sooner or later, you kind of get out of that stage and you walk in the spirit and you realize, you know, I really don't want secular music in my life. So you start kind of like picking and choosing and finding some good Christian music that maybe builds you up rather than feeds your soul. And I hate to say it, sometimes there's a lot of Christian music that's just soulful and not much spiritual. But that's just, you know, my observation, so take it where you leave it. But just like my computer, when you need to get all that dirt out of your system, why put it back in, you know? Begin to work out, you know, those things that you know are causing you to not get direct input from God. Quit you know, forcing yourself to be oblivious to God and get more observant to what He's doing. Get more in tune with the reality that you are a fine-tuned, equipped creation of His, just like a computer has been created with a certain means and opportune working system that only operates when it is clean and efficient and done in such a way that it's not overheated or it's not, you know, like overused or overdone and when you do that you'll find that you can do lots of things just like I can do lots of things with the computer when it's working right and when God and you are working right together wow just like I had yesterday wow it's amazing the things that God and you can do if you just do it his way and find out what it is that's wrong with your way that you might have put into your input devices like I had to. My keyboard just wouldn't work. So I had to suck all the dirt out. <laughs> now it works great. Funny how that works. Don't worry. You make him to be blessed and a blessing forever. You make him exceedingly glad with the joy of your presence. Psalm 21.6 <coughs> Excuse me. Here we go again. <coughs> Did you get that? It was a repeat. <laughs> Bless me. I know. Thank you. Okay, can I go? Okay, can I Bless you. Did you know why people say bless you? And they used to say gesundheit? Because it's a tradition back from the dark ages that, to put it bluntly, they used to think that when you sneezed, your soul or your spirit ran out of your body and you needed to bless yourself so that no demon would come back in. People were kind of funny that way, you know, they kind of were a little bit, you know, kind of off on tangents. There were germs, but, you know, they didn't understand that. They thought it was demons, so they kind of equated germs with demons and kind of, you know, that old kind of thing. So that's why they used to say Gesundheit, you know, in German. And, you know, I forget what the... Zeigesund? No, but anyways. Can't remember what the response would be, but... Well, uh, does might be Zygusum, but it just kind of goes over my brain. So the point being is that that's why we we say God bless you. <laughs> Funny how that you don't know the truth of it until you figure it out. And then now I'll have a whole bunch of people going, I'm not going to bless you. <laughs> it is a learning process to keep the devil from stealing your joy because he constantly tempts you in new ways to lose your patience and to lose your peace. Kind of like what he was trying to do to me today. Ain't gonna happen, man. It's gonna be 102. I'm not losing my cool. I'm keeping it cold in the house. If Satan gets your peace, then he will get your joy. Be strong and resist his temptations to make you worry. Worry is not of God. It is of the devil. The word says that God gives riches and possessions and power to enjoy them. 
To accept your appointed lot and to rejoice in our work is a gift of God. We won't remember seriously the days of our life because the tranquility of God is mirrored in us. See Ecclesiastes 5.19.20 Determine from this day forward you will do everything you can to keep your peace and enjoy your life. See, God is funny that way. He loves you and he doesn't understand sometimes our perspective when he's looking at eternity. He says, what are you worried about? Huh? You got eternity and salvation and you're worried about some little thing that's happening. Come on, get over it. Let's be real. Deal with it. Hey, it's not such a big problem, is it? I got it under control. I'm God. You're not. I'm the one who's making out to work out the salvation that I've given you that you could not get of yourself that I said that you were going to be made perfect even into the likeness of my own son. So, what are you worried about? What are you doing? Enjoy it. Participate with me. Walk with me and talk with me. Don't go off on a tangent because you'll still stumble and bumble and fall and crumble. But should you walk in my way, you'll see the light of the day and enjoy even the trials and tribulations. You'll be able to count it all joy because you'll know that those will slow you down and you'll spend more time in the reality of who I am than the time you would spend worrying and scurrying about the things you think that really aren't that important. Today, choose to walk in his way. It's a lot easier. And even like I did, you know, it's like, well, you got to work through the trials, you know, that come your way. But guess what? Just take your time, work it through, and God will solve it. He did for me. I know he'll do it for you.